This is day three in our unit on uh, composite functions and inverses. Um, in day one and two, we worked on composite functions, and guess what? Here in day three, we're going to start to work on inverses. So specifically, we will learn today how to uh, create the inverse of a function. Um, before we get started, let me say one thing. There are essentially two steps to finding the inverse of a function. First, we switch the x and the y. Then we solve for y. Okay, now when I talk about switching the x and the y and solving for y, I'm picturing an equation, a function written in this form, like y equals 2x plus 3. And we're going to talk about switching the place of the x and the y and then solving for y. Um, but let me point out something to you. Uh, very often, a function will be written in function notation. So instead of giving you a y value like this, you will see the function written in this form. Um, so instead of y equals 2x plus 3, you'll see f of x equals 2x plus 3, or whatever function like this. Just understand if your function is written with an f of x or a g of x or an h of x, uh, something like this, um, this f of x is the same thing as a y. So you can just replace that with y and then follow the instructions that I'm about to show you. Okay, um, so looking at example number one. If I want to find the equation of the inverse of this relation, um, if the steps are switch the x and the y and then solve for y, first I need to switch the x and the y. So um, that means I will have x equals 4y plus 8. There I've switched the x and the y. And then uh, to solve for y, of course, uh, that just means get y by itself. So subtract 8 from both sides. So that's going to leave me with x minus 8 equals 4y. And then I'm going to divide by 4. Okay, everywhere. So that is going to leave me with the final answer, really, of uh, x over 4 minus 2 equals y. Or, you know, written in the proper order, y equals x over 4 minus 2. Okay, so that would be an equation of the inverse. And really, these are going to be very similar. So I'm just going to run through them all very quickly. So on this one, again, switch the x and the y, solve for y. So this is going to be x equals negative 3y plus 12. Subtract 12 from both sides. So that'll be x minus 12 equals negative 3y. Divide everything by negative 3. And that's going to leave me with, you know, because these cancel out. So that's going to leave me with negative x over 3. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. So that'll be plus 4. Okay, so that would be the equation of the inverse of this original function. Look at example 3. Switch the x and the y, solve for y. So first I'll have x equals 2 thirds y minus 4. Now to solve this, to get y by itself, I will add 4 to both sides. That's going to leave me with x plus 4 equals 2 thirds y. Um, for me, the easiest thing to do when I have a fraction is to just concentrate on the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 3 in order to cancel out the denominator. Now, when I multiply the left side by 3, I'm going to immediately do the distributive property. So I'll wind up multiplying both of these parts, both terms, by 3. So that's going to give me 3x plus 12. Now, these 3's just cancel each other out. So that's equal to 2y. 
Um, last step, I need to get that y by itself. So I would divide everything by two, like this. Those will just plain cancel out. So the inverse in this case is gonna be y equals three over two x plus six. Okay, so that would be the inverse of example three. Look at example four. We have to switch the x and the y. So this will be x equals negative y plus five. Um, let's go ahead and subtract five from both sides. So that'll give me x minus five equals negative y. Um, I need a positive y, so I'm going to divide everything by negative one. Or you could think of it as multiplying everything by negative one, either way. Either way, I'm gonna get my final answer, which is y equals negative x plus five. Since a negative divided by a negative is positive. Look at example five. Switch the x and the y and solve for y. So that's gonna give me x equals three y plus one. Subtract one from both sides. I'm looking at x minus one equals three y. Divide everything by three. And that's gonna cancel these out and I'm ready for my final answer, which is y equals x over three minus one third. Um, I could have written this as one third x as well. That would have been the same thing. All right, let's look at example six. Switch x and y and solve for y. So this will be x equals one half y minus four. We need to add four to both sides. So I have x plus four equals one half y. Um, see that denominator of two? So it, it will be very easy if we just multiply everything by two. Okay, that way these cancel out. Now one y is just y. So really, I'm ready for my final answer now. So that'll be y equals 2x plus 8. So that is the inverse for number 6. Let's look at number 7. Now we have these uh, denominators. Well, let's, let's not forget the first step. First step is to switch x and y. So I should first do x equals 1 fifth y minus 1 fifth. Now I need to solve for y. So like I said, you see those denominators. I can get rid of them uh, if I multiply everything by five, would be the quickest thing to do to get rid of all these fractions. Now, these fives will cancel out and these fives will cancel out. So, so far, what I've got is five x is equal to y minus one, because these fives went away. One y is just y. Uh, the last step is to add one to both sides. So that leaves me ready for my final answer, which is y equals 5x plus one. All right, let's take a look at number eight. Switch x and y and solve for y. So that's gonna give me x equals negative two y plus nine Go ahead and subtract nine from both sides. So I've got x minus nine is equal to negative two y. To get that y by itself, we are going to divide by negative two everywhere. And really, because uh, those cancel out, I'm ready for my final answer. Whoa. So that's gonna give me y equals, um, now I can either write negative x over two or I think I'll switch it up and this time I'll go ahead and put negative one half x because there's always that understood one there. So this would be negative one half. So either x over two or negative one half 
x uh, will work. Um, now, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so we're definitely going to go ahead and put plus. And we'll just say plus 9 over 2. No decimals, please. Okay, so that is the equation of the inverse for number 8. Okay, let's keep going. Let's look at number 9. Switch x and y and solve for y. So this is going to give me x equals 2y plus 1 over 3. If I want to get y by itself, uh, I, again, the denominator, I can multiply it by the denominator to take care of that denominator because they cancel out. So that is going to give me, so far, 3x is equal to 2y plus 1. Now, subtract 1 from both sides. And now I've got 3x, put a little line here, 3x minus 1 is equal to 2y. Time to divide to get y by itself. Okay, I'm just going to divide by 2 everywhere. These 2's will cancel out. And I'm ready for the final answer, which is y equals 3 over 2x minus 1 half. So this would be the inverse function for number 9. Look at number 10. Switch x and y and solve for y. So this is going to be x equals 4y minus 36. Um, let's add 36 to both sides. So that gives me x plus 36 is equal to 4y. Now we divide both sides by 4. Okay, so basically you have to divide all three terms by 4. These 4's cancel out. Um, so I'm ready for my final answer. And again, I could either write y is equal to x over 4 plus 9. Um, so that would be the inverse function. Or I could have written y equals 1 fourth x plus 9, which means the same thing. Okay, let's look at example 11. Switch x and y and solve for y. So this will be x equals y over 5 minus 3. So we need to add 3 to both sides. Um, or we could have multiplied by 5 first. It, it, really, it doesn't matter whether we multiply everything by 5 first or add the 3 first. Um, so this is going to give me x plus 3 is equal to y over 5. So, because uh, these cancel out. Um, now we can multiply by 5. Just make sure you remember to multiply all three terms by 5. Um, if you did that right at the beginning, multiplying both sides by 5, you would have had to multiply the x by 5, the y over 5 by 5, and the negative 3. So you would have gotten negative 15 over here if you multiplied by 5 first. Anyway, now that these cancel out, I'm ready for my final answer, which is y equals 5x plus 15. So this would be my inverse function for number 11. OK, all right, this looks like the last one. Number 12, one more time, you switch the x and the y, and then you solve for y. So we will do x equals 6y minus 2. And then we will um, add 2 to both sides. So that's going to give me x plus 2 is equal to 6y. Time to divide. To get y by itself, divide by 6 everywhere. That way these sixes cancel out, and I'm ready for my final answer, uh, which is y equals, and I can either write x over 6 plus 1 third. Make sure you, you reduce. Um, so that would be the inverse function for uh, number 12. Or, of course, I could have written y is equal to 1 sixth x plus one-third, because that would mean the same thing. 
All right, I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you. If so, a like is always appreciated. A little thumbs up helps me out. And I will see you on the next video.